on the News Channel 5 Network. This is the plus side of Nashville. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Plus Side of Nashville. Thank you for being here. I'm Tawanda Coleman. You know, it all started with the question, what if the answer to that question turned out to be Dismas House, an organization founded based on a vision and second chances. Here to tell us more is the executive director of Dismas House, Cheryl Brown, along with Charles Black, who's a former resident. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I love the work that you do at Dismas House. And um, we at News Channel 5, I know we've done some feature stories on you all before, and it's because we believe in what you're doing. But for people who may not be familiar with the organization, Gerald, would you tell us how it got started? Because there's an interesting story. There's a unique story associated with how Dismas was founded. But first and foremost, Dismas would not be what it is today without the help of the community. And so we're so appreciative and blessed that the community has been able to support Dismas House over the last 45 years that we've been in existence. And we we started 45 years ago from a thought, a what if, a what if. Uh, from Father Jack Hickey, who was the chaplain over at Vanderbilt University. He and students on campus really wanted to help men and women who are transitioning out of incarceration by giving them love and support. And they found the best way to do that was to start Dismas House. Uh, and the history of Dismas House uh, beyond that in biblical terms is when Jesus was on the cross, there was someone to the right of him who was being crucified as well, and that was Saint Dismas. And he asked Jesus for redemption and that spawned the name for Dismas House. Love that 45 story. 45 years ago. 45 yeah. years ago yeah. and still going strong. Yes, ma'am. If you don't mind, Charles, tell us how you came to know about Dismas House and what was your experience like there? Well, uh, I was incarcerated at the time and uh, it was getting close for me to make my exit out the uh, prison system. And uh, some people got to telling me about certain halfway houses. And one guy told me about this my house. So once he told me about this my house, <laughs> I started calling around. Yeah. And I think I called them every day. <laughs> I called them every day. Every day. <laughs> every day. And uh the way I used to call was I would call my sister and she would call <laughs> this my house. So we talked three ways every day. <laughs> and uh I say I wear it y'all, wear it y'all, wear it y'all to y'all in me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a good experience it though. It was. Yeah, it really was. I I was glad when I got there and what all the program had to offer mm -hmm. for me. I can remember like it was yesterday. You can? How yeah. long has it been since you were there? It's been over a year. And you can remember it like yeah, it was I got yesterday. my own place, but I just can remember all the different stages and processes of different things, yeah. you know, and it was really, it was really a, a cool place. When yeah. I first got there, I felt uh, a little hesitant about being, about trusting them. Oh, I can understand. Because you go through so many different halfway houses, recovery places, and all this stuff, and they ain't, most of them ain't they don't really show the love, express the love, and and that's the first thing you you run up on the love that they offer, and it just yeah. it just overtake you. Uh huh. And I was just so glad to be a part of this my house, and then they got a outstanding program. The program they got to help you get yourself uh, ready to be in society again. From from prison, cause it is a, a period it's a of transition. transition. You're absolutely yeah, right. It's a, it's a period of transition. You yeah. got to. I know when I was in prison, my frame of mind was like inmate type frame of mind. And then I got in the, in this my house, and I just got to start living yeah. like okay. Let me prepare myself to get back out in society, in a regular lifestyle. Because you couldn't continue to think that way. You've got to transform your mind. Right. You've got to transform your mind. And this my house allow you that, that mm -hmm. opportunity, that space to transform your mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk to Gerald a little bit about 
how do you all go about doing yeah. that? What yeah. are some of the programs uh, that you offer people like Charles? So our program is unique in itself. And primarily, it's just like Charles was mentioning, that the trust issue. There's a lot of anxiety of transitioning out of incarcer incarceration, but let alone transitioning into a home, a family, a program that you're not familiar with. So what we do, which is unique, is within the, once they come into our care, we say, hey, we got you. We're going to take the anxiety out of it. We're going to feed you, clothe you, get you all the, the basic needs that you need while you're in our care, and then heal and build you within that first 90 days. And Charles kind of spoke to that, that space, that time. In most transitional uh, settings, it's an opportunity for folks coming back into society to get back into the workforce. Uh, we subscribe to that, but we want to do that later on. And, we do, and so within that that time frame while they're in our care initially, we try to make sure that everything mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally is taken care of as well as financially yes. as well before getting back into the workforce. And so once there's time to get back into the workforce, we start to work on those soft skills and start to build financially so they can transition from our care. That is wonderful. Some yeah. of the problem is once you get out of prison, if you don't have someone there mm -hmm. to help you, the yeah. recidivism rate yeah. is out the window. Yeah. You guys have a great one. And I think it's the family atmosphere. We can't put our finger on which one is, is the best attribute that we provide our guys. I think Charles will, will tell you he had some apprehension about seeing a therapist, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so that helped him kind of be emotionally and tackle what's going on with him mentally and what triggers him moving forward so he can adjust on that when he's outside of our care. And so those little nuances that are associated to our program really helps with our recidivism rate. Charles has been gone a year. He's still involved with us. He still comes by and mentors some of our guys. He even picked some of our guys up that are new to our organization. So the first person they meet is somebody who's come out of our program. So that family atmosphere is what really makes us unique and, and I think attributes to our recidivism rate being so low. I think so too. Yeah. Charles, wonder what would, where you would have been had you not had this program there? Well, I don't think I've been where I am now. You don't? No. Uh, and uh, I think one of the problems most people have when they come out and cost, uh, uh, come out for me and incarcerate is uh, that they have to they have to try to start too quick. You know, you move with somebody and right away with the day you move in, the day they really want you out of there. Yeah. Cause they, you know, they don't mind trying to help their family member or whatever, but they feel like, hey, we've been doing it too long. For you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's <laughs> you know? time for you to start yeah. getting a job. We got to take a break. <laughs> but we definitely want to talk more with you guys and hear more about Dismas House and all the great work you're doing over there. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Appreciate it.